Hey, how you doing? Justin here, and in this lesson, we're going to be checking out the eight essential chords that every beginner needs to know. This is revision. We've covered all of these chord shapes in the course thus far, but I just figured it was a good idea to go through and revise them all, make sure that we're all on the same page, that you know exactly what you should be doing, how you should be playing it, the common mistakes, make sure you're not making them, and just basically go through and make sure the foundation of these eight essential chords is really, really strong. So let's start off. The very first chord that we looked at on the guitar journey was the D chord. Now, a lot of you probably discovered it wasn't the easiest chord. Why did we start with that one? Well, because it's not quite the easiest chord. So you want to spend a little bit longer on this chord because it is a really, really important and common chord shape. Now, the little tricks here, making sure that we use the fingertips, okay? Because if the fingers lay down a little bit flat here, the third finger will be muting the thinner string. Uh, first and second finger, actually, they can lay down a little bit. It's mostly the third finger that doesn't want to lay down, but getting used to using right on the fingertips and getting the fingers placed right up next to the frets. Again, with the D chord, the most common problem is having that third finger like way, way back toward the first and second finger. So you really want to be working to push that right up. And with the D chord, remembering that we don't want to play the thickest two strings. Now, I've said lots of times it doesn't really matter so much if you accidentally hit them in these early stages, but you want to aspire to not playing the thickest two strings. Okay, if you accidentally hit the fifth string, it's not too bad. The thicker string, yeah, uh, it doesn't really sound great. Okay, so you want to aspire to not playing those strings when you're strumming. With an up strum, because of the motion, you shouldn't be accidentally hitting them anyway, because you shouldn't be trying to hit all of the strings with an up strum. So it's basically that down strum, making sure that the pick makes contact on the fourth string as it's going down. That'll come with practice, but be aware that that's what you're trying to do when you're playing your D chord. So moving on to the second chord, the A chord. Okay, now this one again, some of you may have learned it this way. But if you're learning it, playing it that way, you're going to have to press real hard with that first finger. I really don't recommend it. You want to be sticking with this finger. I think it's really far better. Making sure that the second and the third fingers are right up close to the fret. And the first finger is kind of sneaking up the middle there, trying to get between those fingers as best it can. With the A chord, again, we don't want to be playing the thickest string. It doesn't really matter if you hit the thickest string by accident. It doesn't sound horrible. It's actually a note in the chord, but best to try and avoid it. Again, with an upstroke, it shouldn't make any difference. So you want to be training your downstroke when you're playing, your down strum, that is, when you're playing an A chord to start at the fifth string. That will come with practice. Just be aware of it. And when you're practicing and when you're playing the songs, just sometimes go, oh, am I playing that string? Is that, is, is that right? Just be aware of it. Tune your ears to kind of hear, oh, there's a string there that, that I don't want to hear. So just starting to develop a, a bigger awareness of, for all of the chords and all of the things that you're doing and trying to be, get things a little bit more perfect. So always in the beginner stages of learning guitar, you need to be forgiving and realize that it's a difficult thing. But you want to start at this point to try to aspire to pick your game up a little bit, to get the right notes in the right chords all the time, to be working on getting the grooves feeling nice, that kind of stuff. That's the general lay of the land of grade one. You can do the stuff. That's cool. Now we're trying to just lift everything up a little bit. Okay, so same goes with the A chord. The A chord, the, the, the most common mistake or the most common problem is the thinnest string not ringing out. Okay, so the third finger laying down a little bit too flat and touching the thinnest string there. Uh, that's one of the things that you just want to be, yeah, always kind of checking if you're playing. You want to making sure that that thinner string is ringing out there. Um, the third chord that we looked at was the E chord. For a lot of people, the E chord is the easiest. Well, not quite as easy as E minor, say, but but you know, definitely easier than the A and the D. It just feels a little bit easier. The grip, the shape of the fingers is kind of easy. Again, trying to make sure that using the tips of the fingers is a really good idea. But there's nothing too difficult with that one as long as you're using the fingertips. If you let the fingers lay down too much or you're gripping like that too much with your hand, you'll probably find your fingers into a bad position. So remember to keep that thumb behind for now. Later on, of course, I've, I've said to you a few times, very likely thumb will creep around the top. But at these early stages, you want to try and keep that thumb behind the fretboard if you can. So E chord, I'm assuming not too many of you are going to have problems with that one. Okay, now we're going to have a look at the minors of those three chords. So we had A minor, first of all, relatively simple, it's essentially the same as E chord, but down a string. Okay, we want to avoid playing the thicker string if we can with the A minor. We don't have to be too fussy about it, but that's the goal. The E minor, very, very easy chord, just the same as E, but lifting off the first finger. Not many of you are going to really struggle with the E chord too much, I don't think. And lastly, the D minor, this is a little bit of a sticky chord. I've, I've found that a, a, a pretty awkward one to jump to. 
you know, getting used to using the little finger, which is not something we used a whole lot in the course so far. So <clears throat> some of you will be, will be finding D minor a little bit sticky, but things that deserve the most practice are the things that you find the hardest. Okay, last two chords, C chord. Now with C chord, the big deal is not getting the fingers square on. If you've got your fingers square on like that, it's gonna be really difficult. So you wanna make sure that the fingers are at an angle there. It'll feel a load more comfortable. The trick is to keep the fingers on the fingertips when you do that, not to just let them all lay down flat. The fingers laying down flat with the C chord means that most of the notes aren't gonna ring out. It just ain't gonna work. So you really wanna be thinking fingertips of all of your fingers. Maybe the third finger slightly flatter than the other one so that you can mute the thicker string, so that tip of the third finger there, muting the thicker string is a really good idea with the C chord if you can. And the last chord, G chord. Now, many of you will have learned it with the first finger. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the way I learned to play G and it's the way I played G for a long time, but I really, I really think it sounds better without the first finger on. It's how I play it nearly all the time. So I figured, why am I teaching it that same way that I was taught when I, actually this is what I think sounds better and, and I think it's a better way to do it. So it's up to you. Definitely no harm in putting the first finger on if that's what you prefer to do. But just, yeah, if you're gonna do the two finger one, making sure the second finger is laying down just that little bit to mute the fifth string. That shouldn't be hard for many of you to, to, to get that right, to get that muted there and then just playing through and making sure that all of the notes sound good other than that. The rest of that G chord is relatively simple. So when it comes time for your chord perfect practice, you wanna work on the chords that you find the hardest. If you're good with all of them, take it out of the practice routine. If you can play all of the chords and you're getting all of the notes in all of the chords fine all the time, you don't need to work on it anymore, okay? So be powerful when it comes to the practice routine. Really think about what you need to do. But if some of the chords are a little bit ropey still, spend extra time on them. If you're really struggling with D minor, dedicate all of the practice time to that one chord. If you're kind of good with all of them, but they all need a little bit of work, spend a little bit of time on each one, each practice session, and just go through and give it a quick check and make sure that it's all working well. There's no real hard and fast rule here. Like I said, everyone's gonna have a different battle here. So you need to figure out what chords are the ones that you need to work on, and then use the chord perfect practice to try and get them all up to the same level. If you're really struggling with any of the chords, there'll be links in the lesson below to each one of the chord lessons. So maybe go and revise those lessons as well, just to make sure that you're getting them all as right as you possibly can. See you for more very soon, bye-bye.